Hello everyone and welcome to round number two, the back nine at the 2019 Memorial Championships presented by Discraft. Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy, joined remotely with Kevin Jones. And Kevin, we just watched hole number nine on the front kind of bite our players as it did down during round number one. But uh, there's plenty of birdies to be had on this back nine. Let's see what they can do. Yeah, every hole is going to be birdieable coming up, and nine definitely took a, stole a couple strokes from our players, but hopefully they can get them all back here and see a bunch of birdies on the back nine. Starting with hole 10, a 381 foot, kind of tr really tricky shot, honestly. Um, if you have huge power, you might go for like a huge sweeping hyzer, but if you don't have that huge power, then you're going to have to kind of get a little bit sneaky through these trees. Yeah, we saw Macbeth go with kind of a lower line as opposed to like what we saw from you yesterday or maybe Nico here going with a higher, wider line. But it looks like Nico landed <laughs> within a few inches of where Macbeth just did. This is Chris Pinnegar. Oh, wow, that was amazing action. Yeah, it almost sounded as if he skipped off of one of their discs. Either way, oh, I think it marked. <laughs> that I, it wouldn't surprise me because there's not really that much skip usually in there. That would be extremely fortunate if that happened. Reed having to go sidearm there, that that's just a little too big of a sidearm to be super realistic. It's it's huge. Um, this is a very very common problem on this hole. This tree or these trees, depending on <laughs> what you want to call it, comes in the way a lot. Yeah, we saw Calvin with a little trickery being able to go through the tree. Nico's reached out, and this is like a Simon Lazat trick shot at this point. That's, Nico's got every trick in his bag, though. Wow, that was a good run. Yeah, I like that bit a lot. He's got the slope behind the basket, so not gonna go too far past. And the Mach X is gonna catch it no matter no matter what. This is annoying. This is so tough to be in this spot. It's like, dude, come on. <laughs> that's insane. Just the angle that he had to have to get it through there, and just the right speed. Uh, it's just a great putt by McBath. And uh, we're two for two in seeing great shots, you know, through that tree now. Heimberg in round one, Macbeth in round two, and uh, Reed must have approached up to there. I think I may have missed that, but we see a couple of pars. I mean, two under out of four is pretty solid on hole 10 there. Yeah, definitely. You're not going to run into too many bogeys on that hole unless you just uh, get a little bit lazy, but um, executing a birdie is really, really nice. Straightforward for hole 11, 390 feet. It's just a matter, I think, of uh, how wide right do you play it, and then will it filter down to the left, depending on the angle you're coming in with, or maybe how fast your disc even is. Yep, so if you're throwing a backhand on this hole, it's really important to be pretty specific with the angle that you're you're throwing. If you let it hyzer out early on you, it gets out of control really quick. Paul, I believe, threw an undertaker there just perfectly. Yeah, you saw it come in nice and flat, so that's what I was talking about, just like you with the angle. Uh, we see a lot more angle here coming with the forehand by Chris. We'll see if it rolls back at all. Nice. That's helpful, but, oh, he's going to be right behind that tree. Kind of surprising to see Nico. I know he's really worked hard on his forehand shots, and I know he's – getting more and more comfortable with them, especially back here in 2019 even, but still somewhat surprising to see the forehand here by him with, with such a great flexing turnover that he's got. That's pretty solid too. I'm interested mm -hmm. in his angle at the, at the basket as well. Ideally, you want to be long right or short left. And Reed should be making cake of this hole. He knows it. Yeah, that's... um. Or Might that, be in the danger zone, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and this is why I got right behind him just to kind of give everyone the actual view. Not a good spot to be. 
it's incredible how these two trees create so much havoc for everybody. Yeah, it's it's a really cool feature to the hole because it's like it, it kind of creates attacking points of, of where you want to land by the basket when there's really nothing in the way. Nico and Chris both are going to be short right and in trouble. He might have a hyzer in into the pet into the basket here but still nothing nothing easy about this and all too often you see it hit a tree or the basket and get up and roll it can even roll all the way ob so you have to be you know that's in the back of your head depending on the angle you're putting on it sit mm. yeah you're right terry I, I think i've seen them roll into the water from there yeah you just uh, you know, everybody's usually aggressive with their putt, and then when it hits something, that slope is probably greater than you even realize. And Oh, well, Macbeth put himself in just the right position, and he seemed to ne negate his bur uh, his bogey on hole nine pretty quickly, going back to back birdies on ten and eleven. Yeah, that's right. Kind of surprised to see him go for the uh, fairway driver, but he is also just a master of throwing fairway drivers perfectly. So. Uh, he definitely has the sidearm, though, to, to attack that hole as well. Relatively short, 290 downhill, hole 12. We saw Ricky go just a bit deep yesterday, and then he actually ended up three-putting thanks to a nasty roll away. Uh, this is another one where it's it's short and it's easy and it's right in front of you, but don't count it too early. Yeah, it, it's tough to count it as just a birdie because it takes a really good landing zone. Um, to get the right action that you need if you land it too short you get no skip if you land it too long you get too much skip and paul playing a zone is, is a nice play yeah you saw him throw that at what looked like about 50 percent and uh it seemed to have just the right amount of speed where nico completely opposite approach you know goes high and wide and like you just said no skip whatsoever no skip i do in fact like that high play um as of now because if you do get it by the basket it's probably not gonna have any crazy action and that puts him about pin high that's a mid-range we've seen him throw that a few times uh, i think of uh, hole two's approach is where he threw that and reed with the forehand and seemed like with the skip that's that's the uh, right speed for him yeah, that was a really good shot from Reed. Nico with a long downhill look. Probably some kind of headwind. Way deep in circle, too, for Nico. Oh, let's go, oh, Nico. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. Less than ideal tee shot, and uh, that's how you make up for it. That's right. You can never count yourself out of a birdie. And that's going to push Nico to just one under par. So he is well off the pace of what he would expect for himself at this point. Him and Macbeth both started at nine under for the day, uh, for the round. And Reed and Chris both started at ten under. So we're seeing some slow scores here. We'll see if they can get things picked up here in the back as Chris comes up a little bit short. That was one inch from being in the basket. That's frustrating. And Macbeth keeps things rolling. He's got three in a row after the bogey on nine. And that's going to bring him to seven under through hole 12. Yeah, all of a sudden fighting for a double digits round with all these birdies coming up. Reed is in, and probably not what we expected after seeing those tee shots that there would be... Uh, the one par and it would be by Chris as opposed to where we saw Nico but he's coming in from downtown Scottsdale out there Hole 13 <laughs> what's the play that's a long ways away from here <laughs> uh, so 13 um, this is a hole I always say is it's so hard to park this hole because of this hump that's right by the basket I expect to see at least half of these guys 25 feet left of the basket Hope they prove me wrong, though. 
So Macbeth goes with the low play, and we talked about that yesterday with the skip. And there's the hump, and uh, yeah, he's he's within 15. Man, I, I really like that play from Paul. I think that's I, – I probably will be doing that the next time I play the hole. It seems the best way to get as close as possible to the basket and keep the disc out of the wind. Two people executing it perfectly right there. Let's see what these guys do. How often do you feel like you alter your shot based on – what other players have done um like during the round very very rarely uh but after when i have time to evaluate often okay well you see it now a park job by the lefty forehand in reed chris keeping it low he's gonna play for a skip with a sharp edge and yeah you couldn't draw that up much better for four uh back or for four throws no, that's that's so good. I, I don't think I've ever really seen four park jobs on this hole. Good thing we've got some film to review. Now you know what you're going to be doing in future years. Yeah, I will definitely be evaluating this one again. I've always seemed to find some trouble. I always find myself about 25 feet in that, in that little ditch to the left or way right with no skip. And to be fair, in some years we've seen this basket elevated. In other years we've seen hole 12 elevated. So I know they kind of vary it from year to year which basket is elevated, and this is a common one. Here in the 2019 version, it wasn't as we're seeing, obviously. But in other years it has been, and I, I know that can add a, an additional element of challenge here as well. You're throwing that much higher up in the air. Oh, yeah. When they elevate this one, it makes it way harder than your average elevated basket because it's already on the hump. So speaking of humps, you said yesterday this one that we're just flying over, that's kind of the, the divider on this hole. To the left, you may get too much skip, and if you come up right of that hump where that flag is, for instance, you may get no skip. So speed, distance control, all of those things here, right? Yeah, there's a really small area on this hole that your disc can land in in order to get like a park job on this basket. Um, Paul throwing real low, swinging hyzer, let's see how he acts. Get it. A lot of skip, but still circles edge. It's it's interesting. If he would have landed more to the left, he would be like way outside the circle. And if he lands more to the right, he'd probably be way outside the circle again. Miss that. I guess I don't think that tree comes into play ever. No. <laughs> Nico, a little uh, frustrated fist bump there as he knows he was off his mark. I think this hole does set up a little better for a lefty if you've got the right angle for it. It definitely does. Uh, lefty backhand's a really good play for this hole. Had the nose been up just a little bit more on Reed's shot, I think it would have flared more to the pin. And that needs to sit down. This is a mistake that I've made so many times. It needs to hit a tree or a person. That's out of bounds, possibly in the water. It's, it's truly incredible as we're seeing Nico throw a really good approach. Just how quickly the, that sidewalk and that water can come into play for an errant shot here. Yeah, so fast. And it's like 60 feet left of the basket, but with how the ground is, it happens so often. Paul, just inside the circle, really, really solid shot from the tee, and I expect this to be right in the middle of the chains. Yeah, and you called it. <laughs> Macbeth, who seems to have found his his putting stroke here. You said he, he had a few of them that were a little short to get started. And ever since then, he's uh, pretty much been dialed in on every putt. Oh, no. Nico walking away with his par so you see Macbeth has doubled his score he started again at nine under he's now at 18 under Nico is at 11 uh, just two under for the round and Chris if he can save his par uh, I'm sorry save his bogey here he'll be back to where he started the round which was at 10 under uh, and that's exactly where Reed started the round as well so really Paul Macbeth nine under the rest of the card you know, even or, or just a couple under. 
Yep. Yeah, Paul has found his zone, his Tiger Woods zone. <laughs> and his Z zone, four time zone, all those other puns we can play on that. The pole 15, uh, just a power hyzer for someone like yourself? Yeah, it should be. This is a, a pretty nice hole for anybody with a nice hyzer game and, and some good power. I really enjoy playing this hole. Um, I expect to see a couple really good drives from these players, especially Paul. This is right in his wheelhouse, as many holes are. But <laughs> this one, great. Yeah, not much to say to that. Exactly what you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, there are trees uh, that guard this basket, but I don't really know even specifically like where exactly you want to be. It's just like random. It seems like sometimes you, it's in your way, and sometimes it's you have a wide open putt. I haven't really figured out exactly where I want to land, but I know like if you're short and dead on with the basket, that's probably a trouble area. See if Reed got any skip, and then all of a sudden it does appear. So he's looking at a birdie from there. He's almost pin high. We'll see if both Reed and Chris here can maybe get things going to finish out their round. Just a few holes left to play. And he's playing more of a flex. Maybe he doesn't have as much power as the other players, so he had to play that flex, but it looked like he uh, just kind of turned it over too much right off the bat. Yeah, anytime you have to play the flex, it, it definitely takes a, a little bit of a percentage off of your chances of executing it, in my opinion. If you can get a hyzer there, it, it's a way more efficient and way more consistent. But many people have to play a flex on this on this hole. And you're seeing those discraft banners that were kind of blowing from right to left from that previous vantage point, which means there's a, a slight headwind uh, as you're trying to throw off this tee shot. So Paul threw an, a really good drive, but it just happened to be short. And now he's in an awful spot. So, yeah, as you said, Macbeth with not quite enough power and off the tee, I thought he was exactly where you wanted to be. I, I would have put him basically right where Nico is. So Nico's shot looks great. He's just outside the circle. The trees don't come into play here. Or at least shouldn't, unless you're playing a trick bank shot. Got it high enough. Nico reflecting that he got it high enough as he was putting slightly uphill, but just off the mark. Good stuff from Reed. It's cool to see the the lefty line. I I have like I'll never even look that way. <laughs> whenever I'm playing the hole. So I don't even know if it's like wide open, if he has any trees to miss over there. Yeah, I think when you've got Reed's power, uh, that, that makes sense for him just to blast it out there. Uh, it should be fighting back toward the basket. Um, you know, he's got a little bit of the hill to contend with, but a uh, great shot there by Reed. And we've got just three holes left to play here in the second round. There's a Mando here. Does it even come into play though? Uh, it definitely should not come into play, but um, there has been people. There's definitely been people miss it before. Um, it's it might play as a mind game, but it really shouldn't. This hole uh, is very very straightforward and pretty simple for the most part. It is elevated, so it's going to add a, a quarter stroke or something like that. But it's also a really parkable hole. Yeah, and really the Mando only would come into play for someone who's left-handed, like we saw Reed, who uh, opts for the forehand. But if you're a right-handed backhand player, like you're going to see the, from the other three, you're not even thinking about either of those Mandos that you have to navigate through. No, not at all. The only thing you're thinking about as a right-handed backhand player is playing it out to the right side and making sure that you don't saw it off because when you saw it off then you hit the top of the hill and can flare pretty far from the basket we'll see if that's got enough power it should be decent yeah, just maybe a little bit short but seem to have the right amount of control and Nico's deep of the basket. We're seeing the flag there, so that means he's just outside the circle. 
if you look just to the left of Nico's head, you see the Discraft banner again, indicating he's got a little bit of a headwind to this elevated basket. Yeah, this is a tough putt. That was cool. Did you see Eric Oakley throw right above the camera? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how, like, you can kind of do that. You know, you're throwing right at you, but there's no chance that it's going to hit you. Nico not getting that one up high enough. And McBath has almost the same putt. This would be a really good putt for Macbeth. He's probably somewhere around lead card and might even need this putt to, to have a chance at it. Golly, so good. That's going to push him to 19 under. That's 10 under for the round with two left to play. Reed's going to capitalize. And uh, what do I know? As Chris has CTP right next to the pin and an easy drop in as he's going to go to one under for the round, putting him at 11 overall. And hot round for uh, to open this was a 15 under by Eagle uh, during the very first round. So we know that there's plenty of birdies to be had out there. Move over to hole 17, 468 feet. What's the play? Hole 17, you're probably throwing a, a big swinging hyzer if you have the power. Most people are also gonna have to flex this hole, but that just makes it a little bit more hard. Um, I'm kind of curious as to what Reed is gonna do here. I, I guess there's a lefty hyzer, hyzer line that you can swing it in as well. Um, but other than that, it's just, it's pretty straightforward. It's just really far. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, if you somehow don't get all the way there, you have that, uh, sidewalk to contend with, uh, way on that left side, but that'd only be if you turn something over. And again, we're seeing a, a tailwind for Macbeth here as they're about to tee. Yeah, that looks really good. It, it, the wind's going to help it, too. I think it's a, a some right to left as well. Oh, my goodness. So good. <laughs> Anytime you can get past those two trees just to take them out of play uh, is a little bit of a bonus. If you're going to you know, put yourself on the dance floor or on the green, getting past those two trees just is one, one more thing you don't have to worry about then. Yep. This looks pretty good too. It, it probably needs a little more distance. Oh, and a bunch of flare too. I wasn't ready for that. And Nico, who's had a few missed opportunities, probably ready to give this uh, <laughs> a full send. Yeah, that, that wind made him flare pretty far. It's really important to hang it way out to the right because you're going downhill so far and you're going to catch a bunch of skip at the end. But the bonus is that you don't have to mess with the trees and what a great putt there from Chris. And like halfway, three quarters of the way, he knew it was in. Yeah, he had a great feeling about it. Reed, who's just a bit closer... Ah, uh, yeah, I was going to say, so Reed needed to do exactly what he just did, which is put it high and above the basket and let the wind push his hyzer putt down. He just uh, didn't get quite the the reaction from the disc as he was thinking. Still a really good effort, though. And Nico still off his mark, so not Nico's best day out here. Uh, as McBath kind of adjusts his disc to where Nico's had uh, slightly moved it. Did he really? Yeah, he. Uh, when Nico's came through, it hit it and moved it a couple inches, and then McBath actually uh, replaced it back to where it was by a couple inches. No way. I didn't yeah. even 
I hadn't even considered. I saw this get moved like ever so slightly, but I've never, of all people, to, to actually move it an inch. Paul doesn't even use a mini. I, I'm really surprised he did that. <laughs> uh, he needs all the help he can get, apparently, as we go into the 18th hole, the 36th hole of the tournament, uh, and, and obviously OB on the left and on the right. Uh, fairway driver, uh, forehand, what, what are you calling here? Yeah, I mean, calling, you're going to see a few different things. Reed is going to have the best chance at a birdie here by far with lefty hyzer. I think they're still dealing with some right to left wind, but Paul is just a master at this shot. It's insane. That is just mind blowing to me how good at that he is. Throwing a fairway driver with that much control is uh, something I got to work on for sure. And it looks like he threw that at about 75%. Uh, he did come up a little bit short, but certainly all the control that you want here. Yeah, which is even more impressive, like powering down on it and still having your timing being perfect is, is crazy. So I guess those banners are showing maybe some head. I'd put my money on Reed being a CTP, though. All right, you're going to go with the lefty. And that's CTP so far. We see what Nico has. Boom, what a great shot. Nico's going to have a, a tough shot here with his uh what his powerhouse is is really overstable discs on flex lines and that's not really ideal for this well it looked like he brought it in tight and on the right side he was trying to flex over on it but maybe missed his line of release and so now we're in a position where it, it, this is layup zone i mean he he's 100 feet from the pin yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a layup all day. Uh, who knows what he's thinking right now, but yeah, he was trying to make it. I can respect that because he's actually really good at those uh, little throw-ins. I've seen him throw in some crazy shots before. And at a much closer distance, Chris says, I'm not messing with that. McBath trying to finish strong here. No way. Wow, yeah, not something you'd anticipate, you know, after putting himself right at circle's edge. Uh, Macbeth not able to capitalize, and uh, he follows up his 9-under with an 11-under, pushing him to 20, which I think is going to put him on the second or third card as we move over to Vista for the next two rounds. Yeah, now that I remember, people were destroying this course last year. Yeah, yeah you're seeing, you know... Uh, Eagle McMahon and Simon Lazat, you know, shoot 13s and 14s back to back. So uh, losing ground when you're sitting at 20 under, unfortunately. Yeah, somehow. All right, Kevin. Well, I'm going to say thank you again. Please leave a comment, you guys, down below as to what your favorite hole on the back nine is at this course. And uh, appreciate it. Maybe we'll see you again, maybe round three, Kevin. Yeah, sounds good. Hopefully everybody else joins us. See you guys there. All right, we're going to move over to Vista, and uh, I'm going to check in with Paul McBeth after this round. I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and that was my video blog. Paul, uh, you open with 12, then you come in today with 11, uh, just letting one slip on the last hole, but how did the round feel overall? I opened with 9. Just kidding, we'll start that <laughs> over. <laughs> Cut. Oops. Cut that. Beep. He's the reason there's more takes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and this is my video blog. Paul, you open up with a nine under par. You come back up, you approve by two. How did the round feel for you? Well, surprisingly, not as good as yesterday. Um, I was a little bit better on the putting green, but driving, I didn't feel like I had as many opportunities for birdie. Uh, but, I mean, nine and 11, that's, you know, something you, you look for out here on, the, on this course. Well, and you had said just before the round started that that's the one thing you thought you had to clean up a little bit, maybe, were the putts. So those were on, but the drive's just a bit off. Really unique format this year that we then go to two rounds at Vista del Camino. Uh, what are you looking for out there? Well, to come back, um, they're still out there. They still have a few more holes. Uh, I don't know anything about the scores yet. Um, I was just trying to focus on focus on really putting today and just stay in that mindset. But uh, yeah, doink the last one. But uh, yeah, clean that up and get a lot of birdies over there at Vista. Yeah, I got, I got a ways to make up. All right, Paul McBeth, the disc golf guy. Thanks for watching. We appreciate all the support and the sponsors out there. 
We'll move into day number three here at the 2019 Memorial.